Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everybody and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Richard Smith and I'm Global Applications Manager at Taylor Hobson. Today's webinar is entitled Ball Screw and Ball Nut Measurement. The webinar forms part of a series of webinars that we are running. And in this one, we will look at spiral measurement and axial measurement. So we cover the measurement and analysis of spiral harmonics, surface finish and axial form, all of which are critical for ball screw and ball nut functionality and low noise performance. We'll also take a look at helix angle correction and Gothic arch analysis. These measurements and this analysis relates to vibration, noise, resonance effects, wear, and the fit and function of ball screw assemblies. We'll start with spiral measurement and analysis, and that's carried out using a roundness instrument such as the one there on the left called the Talleyrand 595H. And then we'll look at axial measurement and analysis and that's carried out in this case on an instrument called the PGI Novus from Taylor Hobson. And we'll have a look at the harmonic standard for verification of harmonic results. We'll also have a look at helix angle correction and Gothic arch analysis. So let's make a start with ball screws and ball nuts measured using spiral measurements on a roundness instrument, in this case on the Talleyrand 595H. The Talleyrand 595H is shown there on the right and consists of an air bearing spindle and precision datums, a column and a radial straightness unit. It also has active anti-vibration to reduce noise. And the column and spindle are synchronized so that we can measure spiral measurements. Spiral measurement is shown there on the left on the contact point of a ball screw. And beneath it is a harmonic standard that we will take a look at. Uh, that's used to confirm that we are getting good harmonic results. Typical results are shown there in the middle, and we'll look at those in a little bit more detail in a few minutes. So precision fixtures are an important consideration. This reduces the amount of time required for alignment. And also positions the thread, the ball screw thread on the left there or the ball nut thread on the right. In the right position in relation to the measurement. So. On the left there we have an interchangeable locking bolt that bolts into the end of the ball screw and that means that before we start, the thread of the ball screw is very well aligned to the spindle axis. On the right, we can see a Talleyrand ball nut fixture with a kinematic support and polarization for rotational alignment. We can see that there on the right here. We can see that the ball nut there is supported on three kinematic mounts, three rest pads, and the plunger here pushes it against two dowel pins. The whole assembly is mounted on three kinematic supports. So before we measure, ball screws and ball nuts need to be precisely aligned to the rotating axis of the measuring instrument. This is so that the stylus tip can follow the correct path around the thread. 
Some helical threads have limited or no plane shaft regions. In this case, the instrument needs to be able to auto align or center a level on the thread itself. And the two instances are shown here. In the picture on the left, the Talleyrand shaft, shaft alignment is done on the Talleyrand using the plane shaft areas at either end of the thread. A measurement is taken here at the base and a second measurement is taken at the top. An alignment axis is created through the two roundness planes and then, then the shaft is aligned to the instrument axis. But on the right, there is no plane shaft area. So the stylus tip follows the, the thread and rotates around on top of the thread for one or two leads and moves to the top and does the same thing. And this time we plot an axis through the two short spirals that have been taken and we do the alignment in this way. And we'll have a look at that now. So the stylus tip is positioned precisely on the outer section of the thread. The part rotates. The stylus is moving up at the same time as the part is moving round, keeping the stylus positioned precisely on the thread. After this is done, we move to the top and we repeat the same thing. The stylus follows the thread at the top there and produces a spiral. And then the alignment takes place. So that was alignment on a thread itself. We'll now take a look at alignment on a on the Talleyron system where we are aligning on the thread on the shaft itself. So the Talleyron is a highly stable and low noise measurement platform and it makes it possible to identify clearly the characteristic harmonics of ball screws and ball nuts. If we don't have a low noise platform we can't measure harmonics correctly. So we'll have a look now at alignment. And this time, instead of aligning on the thread, we're aligning on the shaft. And when we measure the thread, we can see it in relation to the, to the shaft. So the center and level routine is finished there. It's repeating again. And now we proceed to measure the thread harmonics. What's happening here is the stylus tip, which is a five micron diamond tip, is following the, the contact point around the, th around the thread. These two points, the point at which the stylus is resting, is are the same points at which the ball sits in this Gothic arch thread. So we measure the lower thread, the lower spiral here, and then we rotate and we measure the upper spiral as well. Measuring independently gives us an idea if there are any errors, where those errors are coming from. So as well as looking at the harmonics, we're looking there at the roughness. And finally, we're measuring pitch circle diameter. That's the distance between the ball centers, either side of the, of the ball screw. And we're, because we're doing an axial measurement here, we can look at the Gothic arch shape itself, as well as the roughness on this shape. The results typically would be something like this, as required by most ball screw manufacturers. In the top left, we can see a polar plot of a single lead. And also look at the noise associated with that particular trace for different 
bands, harmonic bands. The stylus is positioned perpendicular to the surface during the measurements. And you can see at the bottom there a linear plot of the same thing that we see in the polar plot. On the right hand side here, we can see a harmonic histogram with a red line, which is the uh, fail criteria. And we can see the harmonic, uh, harmonic values are well within the tolerance uh, band specified. The orange line below it there is the uh, warning level. The same information is, is in the harmonic table. So for each of these harmonic values, there is an associated harmonic amplitude, or in some cases, wave depth, which is twice the harmonic amplitude. Same thing is shown here with a pass-fail tolerance and a warning tolerance. These tolerance bands can be set from a CSV file, or they can be set from a, a, formula, a very specific formula. And in this case, we're measuring harmonic amplitude here, we could equally be looking at the wave depth if required. So how do we know that our results are correct? If we look at the advanced harmonic standard, we have bands of harmonics around this standard of values 15 undulations per revolution, 50, 150, 500 and 1500. We also have one at 100 UPR as well now on our latest standard. And this allows us to compare the results we get with CMMs. And CMMs have sometimes shown slightly noisy results at certain uh, levels of UPR value. So we'll have a look at the measurement being done on the harmonic standard. So each of the bands is measured either as a single plane or as a spiral. And the results here can be checked against the certificate. So the certificate itself for that harmonic standard has an associated harmonic amplitude. And these values have, a certain un have an uncertainty associated with them. And we can verify when we measure a roundness plane or when we measure a spiral, that the results are in accordance with the certificate. If we look at the harmonic histogram, in this case of the 500 UPR harmonic, we see only a three nanometer deviation from the traceable standard. But we also note that the there are no other harmonics apart from that 500 UPR harmonic. That means that the system we've been using here has very low system noise and very low sidebands. It has high resolution and a high bandwidth. It's able to measure up to 1500 undulations per revolution. And the key thing is that the harmonic value is a very pure value there without any noise. So the key requirements for spiral harmonics are low noise and a stable instrument with active anti-vibration, precision fixtures that we've seen, the ability to align on the spiral itself. The instrument needs a high precision spindle, a high precision column, a suitable gauge and stylus. The gauge and stylus need to be able to detect the higher, in particular, the higher values of harmonics. The spindle and column are synchronized. And we take note of appropriate surface speeds. This will depend on the radius of the part and also on the pitch of the uh, ball screw or ball nut. 
Spiral measurement and harmonic analysis software is also required. And sufficient data points and regular data point spacing is critical for ensuring that we get pure harmonic results. Finally, the harmonic standard is shown there as a means of confirming that the instrument is giving good results. We're now going to take a look at ball screws and ball nuts again, but this time doing axial measurements. It's essential that ball screws or ball nuts are precisely aligned prior to measurement, just as when we looked at the spiral measurements. This ensures that the stylus moves across the thread parallel to the sample's axis, providing meaningful results. Again, some helical threads have limited or no plane shaft regions. In this case, the PGI Novus is able to auto align on the thread itself. So in the picture on the right, we can see in the first instance we are carrying out, uh, we're finding the crest of this uh, ball screw at either end on the plane shaft area and carrying out an alignment so that the measurement is directly in line with the axis of the ball screw. And below it, we can see a ball screw where we have no uh, plane shaft area. So we are cresting on the thread itself. And we'll see this in a minute in the video clip. So if we measure precisely along the axis of the ball screw, we will get good results. If we don't, in this case on the right, we're, we're going to get non-meaningful non results. So to measure axial measurements, we need a low noise instrument such as Taylor Hobson's PGI Novus in order to establish the precise relationship between opposing threads, between the top of the thread there and the bottom of the thread here. So to be able to do this, we have to have appropriate calibration routines and standards to establish this relationship between the upper and lower stylus tips. So our calibration routines tell us the exact distance between the two stylus tips. And so we're able to look at all the dimensions around this uh, thread. So in the video, we will see automatic alignment of the ball screw on the thread itself, giving us true axial profiles. We'll see measurements of both sides of the ball screw using the dual bias capability, the ability to measure down in this direction and up in this direction. And we'll see an, auto, an example of automatic ball, ball screw axial analysis using Taylor Hobson's Metrology 4.0 software. So we start with precise auto alignment of the thread. We find the crest on the left hand part of the thread. We move to the right hand end and repeat the same thing. Once we've done that, we carry out the alignment. The alignment, the, the part is rotated in line with the measuring axis. After this, four points are created from the drawing. And the first thread is measured. The stylus moves into reverse bias mode. And using the PGI Novus Smart Move capability, we're able to move directly to the start of the measurement, exactly on the thread itself, and take the second trace, the lower trace. We now know the precise relationship between the upper and lower traces. Once we've done this, Metrology 4.0 analysis provides the key information in a fully user-defined format. This includes surface finish results. We can see some roughness values on the, on the threads here. 
includes the form error. You can see the form error of the individual sides of the Gothic arch thread. Gothic arch analysis itself, which tells us how the ball will fit, how the ball bearings will fit into the uh, into the threads. We can see the pitch between the adjacent leads along the along the thread. And we can see the pitch circle diameter. That's the distance between a ball bearing fitted at one side one at one side and to to the other side. And these results uh, here are toleranced. We can see that which ones have passed. So we have comprehensive ball screw analysis, including surface finish, form, gothic arch analysis, pitch, pitch circle diameter, and all the results are toleranced. So for axial measurements, the key requirements are a low noise stable instrument, precision fixtures and alignment stages and alignment software routines, the ability to position the stylus precisely on, around and in threads. This is particularly important with very small threads or ball screws or ball nuts. A dual bias gauge, which is able to measure precise diameter and distances. Powerful calibration measurement and analysis software and traceable calibration and reference standards. During the measurement of Gothic arch, the Gothic arch shape, we've used something called helix angle correction. This compensates and corrects for the helix angle, enabling profile measurement in line with the component axis. So helix angle correction uses an axial measurement, as you can see on the right here, taken along the length of a threaded component, for example, a ball screw or a ball nut. It then transforms it so that it represents measurements taken perpendicular to the thread. This is a slightly exaggerated just for the sake of illustration, but it shows that we've taken a trace along the axis of the part, many, many threads we've measured over, and then we're able to see the data individually transpose the data and see what the shape would look like. It is physically a different measurement, but it is still valid and representative, particularly on a uh, good quality ball screw. So if we were not to use this capability, we would not be able to measure inside some threads, inside, inside some ball nuts, and in particular inside very small threads. So Again, without helix angle correction, we would need multiple measurements perpendicular to the thread, and each time we would need to move this in the y direction to bring the, the measurement stylus, the stylus, over the area to be measured. So helix angle correction allows tolerancing analysis of the profile against the design drawing and software simulation of a ball bearing fit within the Gothic thread. So critical Gothic arch features such as contact angle, arc radii and distance between centers can be determined. We saw some of these in the uh, video clip. It works by taking the input axial measurement, the single measurement along the thread and correcting, giving an output corrected value based upon a given helix angle. And by way of illustration, we've just taken one of the threads here, showed the input axial measurement there. And in this case, we've got a helix angle of 15 degrees, a lead angle of 15 degrees. And the output is corrected. And we can see that actually this distance is shortened. So this is going from one to six millimeters. This is going from one to beyond six millimeters. So we can see it has changed the shape. And this is the shape to on which we fit the, the ball 
the ball bearings in the um, analysis. Here's an example. It works on internal and external ball screws and on threads. It allows the user to compensate for the helix angle, ensuring results are calculated along ball contact points. This reduces cycle time. It's particularly useful on internal parts, such as ball nuts and threads, where physical alignment is not possible. And this is shown on the right, where we have a 3.2 millimeter diameter hole, and we would not be able to measure perpendicular to the thread. Multiple leads can be measured in one hit without having to waste time aligning each time. And the picture here shows a dual bias gauge with a small, bar, small ball stylus accessing this 3.2 millimeter diameter hole. And some typical results here where we've fitted the, done a ball fit to the results and worked out the pitch circle diameters, the primary analysis profiles and the uh, pitch values and the individual radii as well. So let's look briefly at Gothic arch analysis. There will be a separate presentation on this later in the series, uh, but we'll take a brief look at this now. It's a fully automated routine that allows prediction of a ball bearing contact position within its race. And that's what's happened here. The ball is now fitted to a single lead here. We've only just shown one here. And the ball can be fitted to best fit arcs here and here. Uh, and it can also be fitted to specified profile contact positions. Axis positions can be calculated by the bisector of contact positions or by the bisector of the radial offsets or by a vertical axis. So the, benefit, the benefits of this are that combined with harmonic analysis and roundness measurement, this software completes the set of measurements required to predict component behavior and reduce scrap. Analysis is completely automated and captures the analysis region through intelligent software. It ensures repeatable measurements with no operator intervention, thus removing subjectivity. And we can see on the right the various parameters associated with uh, Gothic arch analysis. So in summary, we've looked at spiral measurement and analysis. We've looked at axial measurement and analysis. We've taken a look at the harmonic standard for verification of results. We've had a look at helix angle correction and at Gothic arch analysis. So that's the time now for any questions. Um, look forward to taking any questions that anybody has.